Good evening, folks, and welcome to Saturday night's FMEC watering session. As you can see, there's just the two of us. Gary's away today. Uh, Mark's too busy painting his laugh. And I'm not sure where the rest of the guys are, so it's just me and Dave. Good evening, Dave. Good evening, Steph. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. Well, glad to hear it. So you're going to go through your tools tonight for us? Yep. Yep. Uh, Quick run through. Excellent. So, you may, do you want to crack on with it now? Get it done? Yeah, yeah we're doing now, yeah, if you like. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. So, so your main screen and you can yeah. do your beers. Thank there you. you. Go. Cheers. So, I thought I'd start <laughs> with two essential, very specialised tools. That's toothpicks for apply, which I find are invaluable for applying glue um it, yeah it's just they're just well worth having um and cotton buds for removing excess paint glue um you can use them with washes to 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 to, to streak paint in the right direction um and i think it's it's worth getting good ones i would say the cheaper ones tend to disintegrate a little bit uh but uh but yeah so they're basic things that Obviously, you've probably got at home anyway that I find useful. Um, you can get specialist these made by Tamiya. You can see there they're a lot finer, and it's, it's useful to have some of these around, but not 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 essential. Um, you can always cut down some bigger cotton buds. Um, so that's two very basic things that that I find very useful. Um, next up is simple steel rule. It's very handy when you're cutting out masking, um, tape, measuring, trying to get things nice and even. And uh, a basic thing, very much worth investing, that's a cutting mat. If you're, I mean, when I first started modeling, I just used a, a an old breadboard I had. And the issue with that is, is that it will basically blunt the scalpel blades very quickly. This is obviously a healable surface. So you can cut away and your scalpel blades will last a bit longer. Um, plus as well, if you slip the kind of drag of the, the bench, uh, the paddle sort of hold it back, where obviously a wooden block won't. And that brings me on to scalpel blades. I mean, I personally really like the Swan Morton scalpel blades because they clip on very securely. There are other ones out there, the the, the barrel shaped ones. Problem is, I find they can easily roll off the bench, um, and it just sits very nicely and very firmly in your hand. And uh, another thing that's useful to have to complement that is a uh, blade safe. So when the blade's finished, you stick it in there, twist the handle around, and uh, it just uh, stops you stabbing the bin men, basically. Um, so there's a couple of basic tools. Uh, next up, tweezers. I've got some Tamiya ones. These are quite reasonably broad tip. The issue, only issue I have with these, they get covered in super glue. So you need to kind of take some IPA, some isopropyl alcohol, and clean them up every so often and i bought these ones at uh, the milton Keynes show uh not last year year before last and i really like these um dispay i think they're a it's a dutch shop i really can't remember the, the couple that run it but they're a lovely pair of tweezers really nice um and uh yeah very useful with a slight angle for just putting bits in place that are that are, that are hard to access but it's very useful for gluing them in place uh, next up is a basic scribing tool. This is a, a Tamiya scriber. Now, I find oh, it's my least favorite job in model making, rescribing. I find this can be a little bit aggressive. It works, and on larger subjects, one thirty second scale, I think it's fine. Anything smaller than that, and it's, it is, as I said, it's a little bit full on. Um, and basically it works by effectively rending the plastic. You pour the blade towards you like that um, and it'll, it'll leave a nice V shaped panel line, which, as I said, looks great on 132nd. I just think it's a little bit much for uh, for 172nd and 148. So for that, 
I use an RB Productions scriber, which is a lot finer. And failing that, if that's too much, I just simply use a sewing needle in uh, a pin vise like this and uh, use that to scribe. Um, so that's uh, when you come to that, um, just reinstating panel line details, obviously very useful for that. So uh, moving on, obviously a decent pair of sprue cutters, I think, uh, useful. I mean, that's a Tamiya pair. I've had those for a good have six, seven years. And uh, they've been, they're, they're well worth it, especially with modern kits, with modern molding techniques. You've got very large sprue gates holding the parts on onto the sprue. And the problem is if you haven't got a decent pair of sprue cars, it will rend the plastic. So it will basically tear the plastic and then you'll have to do various cleanup and revisions to the part. So again, decent pair of sprue cars are worth investing in. Um, there's a few other, few other slightly more specialized tools. Um, it's a pair of Tamiya photo etch bending pliers. Now I've got a, a pretty decent hold and fold tool, but not about 90% of the time, I'll probably end up using these. Uh, for the smaller parts, works really quite nicely. All it is is just just a flat edge pair of pliers, effectively. Um, the hold and fold, it, it's one of those things, you don't use it very often, it's invaluable when you do have to use it. Um, but I say, yeah, well, if you're starting to deal with photo etch, it's very definitely worth investing in a pair of these just uh, it means that you don't bend the, the you can get some nice bright angles on the photo etch with that so uh, last couple of tools uh, i thought i'd mention these are slightly more specialized uh this is a punch and die set i got this at telford a good couple of years ago very i, I had a, a friend of mine made me one and i used it so much it fell apart so i thought it'd be worth investing in in a decent one so you put your plastic hard sheet in there press that down use the correct punch and that's good for doing i've used it for doing um bolts rivets you can actually get specialized bolt ones i've never really never really uh had the need for one of those um it's just a use again something you don't use very often but it, it really does come into its own for particular jobs um so that's that and then one other thing I've mentioned, a tool that, again, you won't be using every day, but when you do, it's very useful. And this is an Albion Alloys pipe cutter. So if I get some uh, brass pipe, the idea is if you loosen it off and you tighten the bolts up, means you can cut it at an exact right angle which is a lot harder than it seems especially on large pipe like that you can do it on your workbench i've you occasionally you get lucky and, and you'll you'll cut a right angle but more often than not it, it won't work out that way um you've also got this quite handy uh addition now that can basically be locked in place so then you can make sure that you cut, if you want to cut multiple lengths of pipe, you can make sure you cut them to the right length. So that's really quite useful. And another very useful thing, which would be very hard to do in another way, is that go like this. Oops, just loosen up some more. That means you can then cut the pipe at a 45 degree angle, which is very difficult to do. So that just uh, makes life easy. It's very, very, you know, very, very tough stuff. So it really doesn't mind having a, a saw um, go over. I just use a, a, a keyhole saw for that. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, there's just some basic tools uh, such as the the scalpel and the, the rule and what have you, and some slightly more advanced tools that, again, uh, I find very useful, They're obviously for very specific purposes, but like I mentioned with the pipe there, when you've got to deal with a job like that, having something like this makes it a lot easier to do um, and a lot less wasteful. You're throwing a lot less stuff away in the long run. So, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty much, I think, just some of my 
my basic tools. So if you've, got any, if you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments or, uh, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, I hope that's been of use. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I've got a couple of questions yeah. before going to those. Uh, Model Waking Trucker says, good morning. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Jacqueline Stevens says, hi, Lewis and everyone else. Hello, Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. And uh, Clive says, hi, guys. Clive watching. Hope you're all well. Hi, Clive. Yep, all good here, Clive. So what do you use for cutting? Um, and so you said a pin saw. Yeah, I use a JLC and I use um, Hasegawa's micro saws, these. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, all right. Those there. So what do you use for that? For that, for the, for the pipe cutter? No, when you go hacking and bashing, you know, say, for example, I use a JLC mainly, a microsaw. Do you use a microsaw? And if you do, what do you use? Right. These are the ones I, my main ones, I suppose, for when I'm cutting the pipe. Yeah. I tend to use that. I find it just works best. Okay. Um, I use a razor saw, if I can get the blooming box open. <laughs> Use a razor saw and finer parts like that. Oh, yeah. A JLC, same as I've got. Yeah. yeah. And it's handy, got a little mitre block as well, which is quite useful. Again, for cutting lengths of plastic card and what have you. Um, and then finally, if I need something with a bit more grunt, I'll use that. And that's got quite a nice little attachment there. So if you're cutting smaller parts, that works quite well. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the same here. I've got a 45, yeah. 60, and 90 degree. Which uh, my better half's uh, father did for me. Oh, okay. So I've got those. Yeah. <clears throat> so thank you very much for doing that, Dave. Really appreciate no, it. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, as I said, that's just the the base. I you know the the basic tool set that I think most people find useful and a few slightly more esoteric tools that do come into their own. Yeah. Yeah. In the comments, if you've got a set of tools that you use or something that you use that none of us have covered here that you think may be useful to guys, uh, drop us a comment. Let us know what it is you use. Um, we'll have a, Quick butchers. <clears throat> Don't think it'll be a long show tonight. As, as I've already said, Gary's away, bless him. And Mark has decided it, it's better for him to repaint his bog. <laughs> hey, right, each to their own. We've all got real life uh, dilemmas that we have to crack on and deal with, which I'm sure it makes life a lot more fun. <laughs> Are you going to be on tomorrow morning, Dave? Uh, tomorrow afternoon, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. You know, it's uh, a shortened show. Yes. Two hours, yeah. So yeah. two till four. Yep, two till four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, so, cracking on our tanks. So as I never got any, anything done last Sunday. Didn't you? No, I didn't get a I sorry, I lied. I got two parts stuck together. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> two parts. So I've been doing a little bit of catch up during the week. All right. Okay, so, cool. Just getting uh, all the small parts prepped and on my uh, coffee stirrer with uh, oh. some double-sided sticky tape. Whose kit's that, by the way? Uh, it's a mini art. Okay, cool. I ate, I ate the instructions on this thing. 
as I said, I think Mini Art are one of those companies that they've got a lot better. I think this ball tank, the detail's lovely, but it's uh it just I'm not I wouldn't say it doesn't fit together well. It just you you've just really got to test fit everything several times. Yeah. It's 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 uh yeah, not a shake and bake like a Tamiya, certainly. Yeah. Well what really, really frustrates me about this one is all the sprues have no numbers on them. Oh, that old chest. Yeah, that's an old mini art kit, yeah. So what you've got to do is keep flicking backwards and forwards yeah. to the front instructions, find the part, stick it together. Come yeah. back, over, find the part, stick it together. <laughs> and after a while, it's like, oh! Yeah. I had um, that with a special hobby, Avro Anson. All right. Because my, my, my uncle served on him at Right at the end of the second, he was called up and served on him right at the end of the Second World War. Um, and uh, I thought it was a nice aircraft, Tony anyway, Wade. And I thought, oh, it'd be nice, nice, easy build over Christmas. It was an absolute pig. As you say, no, none of the parts were numbered, just a, just a guide at the front. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> It turned out it's you know it's a shame. Lots of detail there, but boy oh boy, it was hard work. Yeah. Oh my god, dear lord, this is a pain. Huh. I find the plastic is very fragile on this. And I've just found two parts from my uh wing nut wings. Oh no. Yeah, I've just found <laughs> two parts that were just parked safely. All right. They come along going, where are they? Oh, my God. Huh. Well, what's going to happen to their moulds then, the wing not wings? Um, I think, because uh, they never uh, did their own moulds, did they? Didn't they? Okay. It, was, it was always out. And I believe, I'm sure if somebody knows different will correct me, um, that it was done by Meng. Ah, so there we go. So the mold will be with Meng. Yeah. I'm not sure whether Meng will start releasing them because if they have the molds, then mm -hmm. they'll release them. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. So that would be nice to see them, those models come out again. Yeah, and they're going for crazy money, aren't they? Oh, ridiculous. Um, a friend of mine, uh, uh, I belong to another group on Facebook. It's uh, RF Armors Modeling Club, Royal uh -huh. X Armors. Um, this guy was selling a load off, and he got five of them for 200 quid. Yeah, I believe one, it. Yeah, one of them was a bloody gother as well. Oof, right. And I'm like, you spawny shitbag, do you want to sell 150 quid? He went, not a hope. <laughs> uh, I've got the SC5 upstairs. Oh, I'd love to have that one. Uh, I've got, when they first came out, that must have been 2010, 2011, I've got that. Yeah, they haven't been out for long, have they? No. Which it's a real shame. Yeah, because well, actually had their own. They were so good. They actually had to, at, at Telford. They gave them their own category, effectively. Yeah. Yeah, you had one thirty-second scale aircraft, and then one thirty-second scale World War One aircraft. Because the the yeah wing nut wing stuff was just cleaning up. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. When you make it. Any parts that go, any faces that are glued, clean them up. Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. they don't go. They're a nightmare. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, no, a friend of mine was um, the first one he built, and uh, he was having trouble. That he was having trouble getting the fuselage. You know, it's a box section fuselage; just would not join together. 
Yeah. And um, he realised he there was there was like a smear of paint along one of the one of the joining edges. Yeah. Of the glue, and that was enough to knock the whole fuselage out of alignment. Yep. No, nothing would fit together. So uh, yeah, he was he was he was like wondering what he did wrong, and then you didn't realise that the level of engineering is that high that that something that small will actually mean that it just will not fit together. Yep, blows it right out of proportion. And it's nice having a kit like that, and it's it's a real pleasure to build. Um. I got my first video when it goes out at seven o'clock tonight on that. Just the okay. intro video and a inbox review. Um, I put the second video out next week, and um, I've got sixteen hours of footage. Yeah, yeah. already. And uh, what will probably give me seven or eight episodes. Um, See, I think I think Airfix learned the trick from Wingnut Wings because what Wingnut Wings would do, they'd release, they'd, they'd, they'd basically make a thousand of something and then stop, and then so demand would go through the roof, yeah, and then they'd reintroduce them again. I think Airfix took because Airfix have been doing that, um, and it's uh, yeah, so you build up demand and then re-release something, yeah. So people will buy it because they don't want to miss out. But uh... mm. but I'm enjoying this build so much. I might even get two videos out a week if I can. Because oh. I want to. I've got the Red Baron to do. So the Fokker Dry Decker by Meng, which apparently is a Wingnut Wings mold. Uh -huh. And then um, I'm going to crack. Up, uh, after that, I go onto my. Uh, King Tiger with the interior. Oh, blimey. Yeah. So but I'm going to do that one as an exploded view. Okay. So everything goes out so you can see everything. Uh -huh. uh, a couple of comments here. Model making truckers says, hi, Jacqueline. And model making truckers says, Dave, question for you. How many commission builds have you done and how many have you dropped like Mark? <laughs> <laughs> how many commission builds have you done dave how many about oh let me see one two three four five probably about about 10 i'd say um what i try and do now i'll only do i don't i'll only try and do things i want to do it's uh, because the, the the problem is it's very hard to estimate. You can't to to figure out how long something is going to take, and quite often, some commissions you're being asked to do something because it's beyond someone's skill set. Like I did a air sea rescue helicopter, and boy oh boy, that was a limited run resin conversion, and that was not, everything had to be done twice. Nothing fit. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so about 10, but I'm trying to, if it's something like I love the start, like I did the, the Star Wars stuff before Christmas, I did the Spartan, that was a commission. Um, and that was something I wanted to do, but, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, if I do take on commissions, do make sure it's something that, I'll, that I would, would have wanted to have built anyway, almost, or something that piques my interest. So, uh, as far as dropping them concerned, um, the second thing I ever built was a Focke Wolf Nightfire. I dropped that really badly, and I think I learnt my lesson after that. So, touch wood, I haven't done a mark. I mean, I haven't dropped anything um, since then. No, uh, yeah, um, my first build, I did a video series for the Spad 13. I just got the, uh, the top wing on. Uh, yeah, nice and correctly, nice angling. Everything. I was really, really chuffed with it, and I went and dropped the bugger. Oof! Yeah, was not a happy bunny. Worst thing one 
remember when I first started, it was a copy of Air Model and one of the blokes in there. Um, he had his, his he had his modeling bench, he had his photo booth in the next room, and he was he just finished this this a beautiful one one thirty second scale Harrier. And he he said so I was in a rush to take a photograph and I tripped up and the thing just went for its maiden flight. <laughs> and uh yeah, all the all the undercarriage was snapped off and the canopy and that it. but yeah, so about three or four days to rescue it. But he got it done, so it's the main thing. Yeah. What a nightmare. Absolute nightmare that is. Yeah. I've had the Royal Mail do a proper job on a couple of couple of kits I posted. Yeah, you said about that. the sea king yeah. was um... twice. Yeah, that 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 that, and that's actually that's why I ended up going to the Scottish Nationals so I could deliver it to the bloke because I'm not I'm not going to do that again. I've sent stuff to Israel, um, Qatar, no problem whatsoever. Scotland for some the Scottish Postal Service. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the boys are always seem to do the job. That must be a nightmare, that must. Uh, another one from this. What type of models do you enjoy building, i.e. aircraft, armour, ships, paper models, etc.? <laughs> Go on, Dave. Uh, anything, really. Um... I don't have a preference. I, I just, again, if it's some subject that interests me, I really would like to do some. Uh, one ship I'd like to do is my granddad's LST. Um, got some some pictures of it in dock and stuff like that. So that's that's one ship I'd like to do. Um, but yeah, anything really. Again, a car. I haven't done a a car since I started back, so that's uh, something I want to do this year. But and of course, the miniature painting I think is just good because you can you can. Just use your imagination on it, and and you can have something pretty acceptable done in in a in a in a day or two, really. Anything in particular you like doing, sci-fi wise? I, I must the Bandai Star Wars stuff. I could, yeah, I could do that till the cows come home. Yeah, uh, because they really are. They're at, you know, this this the snap together kits when I was a kid really won't snap together they were uh, pretty atrocious um and the bandai stuff really is excellent um so yeah i could i could do that all day long How about you, Steph? What's your uh, favourite kind of genre, as it were? Um, I am really loving my World War One aircraft. I love rigging. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't know why. Uh, People look at me as if to say, are you mental? <laughs> but I actually find doing rigging really calming. Cool. So yeah, I, I like rigging. Um, I like tanks. I like armor. I like aircraft. Um, as you say, figures. Um, yeah, I just really, really enjoy the whole lot. As you say, Bandai kits. Ah, oh, could sit, as you say, you can just sit and make those all day. Because they're so well, they're they're a bit like uh, Tamiya. Oh yeah, you, you have to work hard to mess one up. Yeah, um, I, f I like those as um, mojos, mojo builders. Yeah, uh, yeah. them and um, oh, Dubri Firkin, what's his faces? Come on, Dave, you know what I mean. All those. Yeah, <laughs> job jobbers. Toon tanks. Okay. Yeah. Not, not, not something I've really done. 
Um, I f they are great for mojo building. Okay. I find out figure painting. Yeah. Just between builds, yeah, or if, if you're a bit stuck, because as I said, within a you know, something like like this that I was gonna paint this evening, you'll be finished by tomorrow evening. No? Yeah. But uh I'll just check check out that base step. Unfortunately the actual figure, the build failed, but you know the fish and the coral on that base. Let me just pop your full uh, big screen. Oh mate, that's awesome. <laughs> it's for a sea monster. This is this is the whole of the arch villain range. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. the build the build failed. The the build plate wasn't big enough, but uh, that base is awesome. I do like that. <laughs> that's the sort of thing you'd stick in some clear resin. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and make a little dio out of it. Yeah. Uh, it amazes me. I mean, they they this arch villain. They you know they do a do a a range every every month. And this is this is a fraction of them. This is probably about half of what they've done. And yeah. the, the quality of the miniatures is just superb, you know. I mean, really are really are something something else. Yeah, that was one of the things that really surprised me was the quality on the 3D prints. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I said a friend of mine is an industrial designer and he had a filament printer. This is about eight, nine years ago. And uh, it cost him a couple of grand. And it was two weeks of just making a horrendous mess because oh. every you had to do everything yourself. Um, yeah. and he said the same thing now you get on Amazon for about 150 quid and it's all automated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, see a day when, well, I think it'll happen with the aftermarket stuff first. You won't buy an Aries detail set. You print it yourself. Yeah. Um, and then kits will be next after that. Yeah. Oh, there'll still be a place for buying plastic models. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it's a way off, yeah, I think. But it'd probably be like, obviously, there are some people still like buying vinyl, don't they? Yeah. You know, the majority of people download their music. I think this would be the same. Yeah. Definitely. Stick them in. This is infuriating. You alright? Yeah, just the uh, arms. I've got to get sorted. Um, they're just playing silly sods. They're not playing nice. And it's the same one that playing silly sods just won't grip. Well, the glue won't take. 
Yeah, you know, you'll always get a part where the glue won't take. Yeah, the wing on this creature. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you get that with resin a lot, don't you? Just one. Yeah. So I think Tamiya had a record year last year, apparently. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I think Ethix had a good year as well, which is uh, always good. Who did? Ethix. Yeah. Well, it's one of the only things at the moment that has really taken off. Yeah. People have got time on their hands, obviously, haven't they? Yeah. And the whole collectible side of things. Some of the, 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 the there's a Action Man collectibles page I'm on, and the prices some of that stuff's going for is unbelievable. Oh yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, I made the mistake of playing with mine. Yeah, you weren't the only one. It's all good fun getting this sorted. Uh, I was when I was editing the video today, I saw a bit that I'd forgotten about. What I'd done is I'd snipped this part off the sprue and I'd snipped it at the base. Uh -huh. of the gate because it is only a, far, a small fine part. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, I'm going to be smart and clever here. I'll snip it at the gate so I don't lose the bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I know what comes next. Ping! It, and you, even yeah. if you slow it down in slow-mo, you cannot see it disappear. Yeah. It just flew. Oh. And I'm like, where the hell have you gone, you bastard? <laughs> I told you the story the first time I ever used fighter weights, didn't I? No. Well, one seventy second scale rudder pedals for a ME two six two night fighter. Oh, have fun with that one. And they gave you six because it was a two seat. They knew you were going to lose two of them at least. Yeah. So again, the, the first one was just ping, and just God knows where that went. Second one again just disappeared into the ether. So I'm like, right, I'm down to my last. I can't lose any of these ones. So anyway, cut one off. And I just didn't let it out of my sight. I put it, you know, on a bit of sellotape by the side of the bench. Lovely. Second one, no problem at all. Third one, it just disappeared. I'm like, oh, for heaven's sake, I'm, right. I'm going to go and watch some TV before I lose my temper and lose something else. Sat down, watching TV, scratching my beard. I'm like, hold on a minute. I super glued the thing in my beard. <laughs> 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 so I pulled it out, give it a haircut, it was fine. I was just more relieved that I knew where it was. Yeah, save that one for later. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. Lewis, what's your favourite scale? Question from Lewis. Dave? I quite like one thirty second scale aircraft. I think you can really go to town on. I think you can really get, you know, cram as much detail as you can. But I think each different scales are different challenges, I think. You know, the people out there, there's a fellow used to go to Telford, his thing was super detail in one four four scale aircraft. So adding the engine and cockpits in and stuff like that. And, oh. Yeah. Yeah, right. No. Mm-hmm. Not a hope in hell. No, I did one one four four scale aircraft and that was enough. Subatomic modeling. 
Yeah. Yeah, did a fairy barracuda. It was good. You know, I'm glad I did it, but pff, again, talk about losing stuff. Just the worst thing you did. I remember sneezing once and losing an afternoon's work. Yeah, you losing your mind as well. Yep, and your eyesight. <laughs> That's another thing. I think if I did, I, that was 10 years ago. I don't think I'll be able to see it now. So how about you, Lewis? <laughs> I think most trucks are one twelfth scale, is it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I've just recently moved up to one thirty second, one thirty fifth armor. Used to be um, one seventy second aircraft. Was my favourite, but I've I found the larger scales. It started off with the one twenty fourth Mozzie. Oof. Yeah. The Airfix one. Oh, that was. Oh, that was such a ball ache doing that. Reason it was such a ball ache was the amount of extrusion marks you had to get rid of. I think one of the issues with that kit was they started designing it in the early eighties, didn't they? Yeah. And then they put it up on the shelf, and I think rather than start with a clean slate, they they took what was there already. Um. I mean, it was a brave thing to do because at the time they didn't have any money, and I think it sold reasonably well. But boy, oh boy, what what did you do with it, Steph? You still got it? Uh, no, um, it was from a um, a lady in Wellingborough. Her husband okay. died, and she'd seen an advert for it on for Models for Heroes on Facebook. And she contacted us, but she didn't want it. She wanted it done by somebody local. Okay. And I said, well, what well, we've got a big, we've got Peterborough coming up next year. Um, how about I make it for that? And we raffle it off in aid of uh, Mother's Heroes. And she went perfect. Thanks. Oh, Lord. I ended up buying, you know, the strategic undercarriage. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I had a look around. And it was like, oh, good Lord, that is going to be horrendous. Because yeah. of the on that plastic, it was, no, that's that's uh, a specialised undercarriage for that thing. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened with this F-18. Listing pretty badly to port because <laughs> the gear just can't support it. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, not that I not that I want to build one, but that Airfix Wildcat looks lovely as well, and the and the uh, Typhoon. Yeah. Well, I think Mark's done both. Yeah. And I think he's really enjoying it. I'm not sure whether he's done the Wildcat yet, uh, but I know he's definitely got it in his stash. See, that was, a, that was another smart move on the part of Airfix because the uh, American market just can't get enough of it. No, it can't, can it? No, my, my friend Ian, who's an expat, his model shop, they took an order of 20 and they were sold out within a day and a half. And there were guys travelling across the, you know, travelling from county, from, from across state lines to come and get it. So, uh, yeah, Jesus. yeah, and again, they 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 do a run and then it won't do it for a while. And of course, the, the prices go up and up. And and so, when they do release it, people buy them because they want to get caught out again. So, yeah, yeah uh, you've got the head screwed on, Airfix, yeah, because one of their main guys the marketing guys passed away this week didn't he he did yeah i i, I um saw that yeah 
I, re- I reckon I didn't know him. But again, he's a regular fixture at Telford. Mm-hmm. And Lewis just says, I like one thirty one three fifty and one two hundred mainly so it ships. And Mark says, Not yet. So he's not done his uh wildcat yet. I would love it if they did a one twenty four scale sea fury. Oh, dear Lord. I'd be all over that like a cheap suit if they did. I bet. But again, I think that's that's going to have a limited... That, you know, the Americans, I don't think, because it obviously never served in the, 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 in the US. So it's probably uh, less of a possibility. They have done a C Fury, haven't they? Oh yeah, the new one forty eighth one's lovely. Um and so I suppose it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to not quite as simple as just upscaling it, but um yeah. But again it's uh it they would say it costs so much money to produce a big kit kit like that. It's gotta be I, I, I think the Typhoon sold well, but again, it's a uh, it's appeals limited. Um, so the Wildcat was obviously much more much more in the, for the American market and 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 things like that. But uh, yeah, but uh, we can hope. You never know. Yeah. Again, especially if they're doing all right now. Might have a bit more money to spend, so yeah. Um, I, th- I think a lot of companies, the uh, big, I'm probably going to get ripped apart for this one, but it, it, it with the virus happening, it's been swings and roundabouts for companies. Oh, like, yeah, companies yeah. like, as you say, Tamiya, Airfix, uh. We deal with and uh, Dr. Martins, they've had such a good year, it's ridiculous. Really? Yeah, because you know, they're made in England, brand is made just down the road from me. Oh, okay. Uh, Lisa's ex husband works there. All right. And they haven't been able to furlough any of their staff. Right. Because they've been that busy. Hmm. And they they did initially do furlough some of their stuff. Right. And what they've done is because they've done so well, they've given the money back to the government. They said, we don't need it. Oh, cool. But there, there's a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of companies that have gone under. Uh, a friend of mine runs their own business, which has gone under. Yeah. Um, but she said, it's a double-edged sword. Um, with doing that, I was, I didn't realize how much of my life it was taking up. Uh, And she says, I've now got all that experience and understanding that I won't allow it. Yeah. To do that. And she's, she said, she's going to start another business once this is all blown over. Um, and but she said, no, I know so much now, but I'm just not going to let it ruin me. Yeah. These things happen and we have to live and deal with them. So look. A few comments here. Oh, good Lord. Lewis has said, I would like a 124th Vulcan. Wouldn't we all, mate? 
Heritage Aviation used to make a one thirty second scale one. And the uh, guy on Brit model made it. And all you could see was his head and the bottom of his legs. He said, give you an idea, I'm six foot. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was enormous. Yeah. Absolutely enormous. Uh, model making trucker. That's what Nat called. Nat would be calling me, lol. Huh. Uh, Mark Bridge, more like how bloody much? Huh. And my dearly beloved said, you got mail. Oh, cool. Huh. Mark delivery. We're binge watching Fringe at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, there's uh, September's diary or September's notebook. And there's three other books that give a bit of a backstory to Walter Bishop, uh, Olivia Dunham, and Peter Bishop. So I ordered those yesterday. And they've come today. And there's also a... Um, I'm doing Doctor Who again. <laughs> I'm doing that again friend of mine wants me to do it for his missus for her birthday so I've ordered the, the TARDIS again I'm going to do that I've been watching Space 1999 again have you really? yeah well, you know, the, the first season holds up surprisingly well yeah? oh yeah it's, it's yeah, it has its moments like, you know, using an oscilloscope that I had in my physics classroom, but uh but yeah. Um but it was it was all I mean I remember at the time when I was a kid it was the stories were all a bit over my head. I mean I just liked it for the Eagles and the Hawks and stuff like that. But uh but apparently the sec I was there was a documentary online, apparently the second series, um it was an American producer took over, and and it it, it was really quite a different show. Um, yeah. But uh, but and it was really pretty dark. I mean, the first two series it's got Ian McShane in it, and he gets taken over by this. And it's yeah, oof. yeah, nightmare fuel. What was that in Doctor Who on a Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a bit of solvent abuse in between. <laughs> So we can do it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think this time the Doctor Who one I'm going to be filming. Who make, makes those kits then, Steph? Airfix. Oh, okay. Something like Ayashima, but... I had a quick Skagit um, 1612's web page. Uh -huh. They're asking 150 quid for a Comlock and a phaser from Space 1999. Good Lord. Yeah. yeah. Well, as I said, all the, the collectibles. The problem is if someone's at home and they're working from home, they've probably got more money than they know what to do with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so the whole collectible side of thing, I, well, that's why I bought that that hawk kit because I saw an advert on Facebook for the for the you know that they reissue the dinky hawk. For all oh, that'd be cool, and then 120 quid. I'm like, no, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. What was it? Um, if you fancy doing a an eagle, um, you can get the STL files off Thingiverse. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be an idea. And you've got a decent sized build plate to do a nice, good size one. Because there's loads of add ons, isn't there? Yeah. Um, the the uh, rescue pod and the VIP pod are both the same. Okay. Uh, one's got red and white stripes, which is the rescue pod, and the VIP pod is orange. Right. Uh, but you've got the science lab 
Uh, I think you've got a couple of others as well. But you can get them all, all the STL files off Thingiverse room. Okay. Add it to the list. <laughs> Yeah, now we've got our uh, power cut issues sorted. I can print with impunity. Well, that's not good. Because that'd be it, wouldn't it? The power goes out. Sorry? If you're printing something and the power goes, you just haven't got to start again, haven't you? Yep. Mm. So that's all sorted now. That's the our fridge freezer in the house was shortened. Oh, okay. I'm tripping the power. So it throw the power out for everything. So we replaced that last week and we haven't had one cut yet. And it's like, right, now's the time to start printing with impunity. And how much does it, um, power do they use 3D print? Not a lot, mate. Not no. a lot. No. Well, it's not the motor's not huge, is it? It's not like a, the screen's on for seconds, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, resin that I'm getting through at a rate of knots. Good heavens. Yeah, you do. You get through them, get through it stupidly far. But then I think. The water washable stuff, I mean, it's 10 quid more, but then I think you probably end up using about cleaning up with IPA. You probably end up using at least five quid, if not more, in IPA. Oh, yeah. it's. Uh, I did work it out. I think it's something like about using the water washable stuff, you're saving, I think it's about five quid every yeah. time. Usually, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, I'd have to when I was using the IPA washable, you'd have to leave a window open. Oh, the stink was horrendous. Yeah. <sighs> Get on there. Another one from uh, Lewis. What's your favourite kit manufacturer? Dave? Tamiya, I'd say. There's lots of good ones, but I think I've never built a bad Tamiya kit. I prefer Meng. Yeah, Meng, I've only, I've only built one. So, but... Yeah, and that was excellent. I built, built the Meng Gaz Tiger, you know, like the Russian Humvee. Yeah, and that, that was that was one of their first ones, and that was brilliant. And I think uh, the Meng Bradley fighting vehicle with full interior is, is a, that was their first armor kit, and that is brilliant as well. Yeah, never built, never built it, but I've I've sourced a, a few for for beneficiaries, and yeah, that, I mean that they were really really had something to prove and they did um you know for 50 quid the only the only thing well i don't i don't really know there was probably a kit available but to get an interior you'd be looking at an airy set and have to spend the best part of 150 quid i think but uh yeah but again going, going back to the tool the only but it's, and it's not an issue at all but i think I'd, 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 um, I can't remember what happened. I had a decent pair of sprue cars. I think I lost them or something. Anyway, something happened to them, and I bought just a cheap pair from Hobbycraft, and I got this men kit, and that's when I realised you need a decent pair because it was just rending the plastic trying to get it off the sprue. Yeah. But, yeah, as I said, uh, men are good as well. Yeah. Um, I've built... The whippet, 
decked out was a lovely kit. And I've got the, as I said, I've got the dry decker. And I've got the uh, King Tiger with interior to do as well. So we'll see after those. Yeah. Um, Oh, so somebody's trying to get hold of you. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll bring him back. It's all right. Okay, a couple of uh, comments. James Skiffin, Dave, what is your favourite tool? Uh, well, the one I use the most, I suppose, is the scalpel. I'd say, I mean, I've got a little pile of tools by the side of my bench. And uh, the tweezers and the scalpel, are the most useful one, I would say, or the one that's used the most. Mine is these new snips I've got. Got them from AliExpress. All right. They're a set of youth star. And oh my God, they are awesome. Absolutely stunning. And they're well worth 15 quid. Um, UA 91560. Okay. Uh, they, they just slice through anything. And Do one I'll, thing. Sorry, Steph. Sorry, Kara. My, my scalpel blade is amazing. <laughs> Dave. Ooh. That, that was straight up there. I, I was preening, you know, when you very gently do it. Uh huh. And I very gently did it, and I could I could feel the blade very slowly sink into my thumb. Ouch! And the thing is, though, it wouldn't stop bleeding. Yeah, it goes in deep, doesn't it? That's the problem. Well, I, I'm. Uh, I'm on aspirin. Okay, right, yeah. So, the bastard wouldn't stop. They didn't put you on warfarin, did they, Steph, for a while? No, I have never been on warfarin. Right. Uh, I don't have high blood pressure. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I've got... Because until my knee finally went, I'd always been very, very active. Right. Uh, I've always played sports. Um, kept myself quite fit. Um, so I had quite low blood pressure. Right, right. I kept myself fit. Um, the really undenied about putting me on the uh, blood pressure tablets keep my blood pressure down i said do you really need to do that and, well no but mm -hmm. right. yeah. so now when i have to get travel insurance one of the questions they ask you is do you take blood pressure tablets yes i do but i don't have high blood pressure right. it's a little bit annoying but hey ho yeah, my dad was on warfarin when he had he had a couple of TIAs. This is about fifteen years ago. Yeah, and he went two years later. Went to the doctor, and the doctor said, um, "I just want to check your medication." He goes, "Um, he goes, um, you still taking this warfarin?" He said, "Well, yeah, you know." Somebody said, "You're only supposed to have it for six months," <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, <laughs> yeah, because same thing." Because he, he's, I mean, this is when he was in his eighties. And his skin's like paper, and yeah. the problem is, he got if he got cut, it would just wouldn't stop bleeding, as you say. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, comments. Uh... Lewis says, hello, James. And James says, oh, you got the point there, Steph. Yes. No, I didn't get the point, mate. I got the flat of the blade. If I'd have got the point, I'd have probably stopped bleeding sooner. 
We've all done it. Oh, God. Yeah. I did it. Brand new pair of jeans. Dropped the scalpel blade in my leg. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> I tell you what, I don't know whether you can see it. Hang on, let me just flick cameras. My better half made me this. It's a bit like a jewelry apron. Oh yeah, they're yeah they're very useful. Bar aprons. She yeah. sewed them together, and I tell you what, mate, this has stopped me dropping so many bits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And the thing is, though, with not dropping the bits on the floor, it also means I'm not climbing on and off my stall as well. Which means it's not causing me any pain. Because it adds up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, if you get if you get hold of a couple of bar aprons, stitch them together, attach them to your bench. Because, what is it they call it? A jewellery jewelry apron? Yeah, jeweller's apron, yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose you're dealing with diamonds. You don't want to be doing the carpet monster eating a couple of thousand pounds of a diamond, do you? No, you don't. Yeah, I think I might be track bashing tonight. Oh, good Lord. Oh, these are going to be fun. Not. I have to glue each of these separately. For anyone missing Gary, I'll... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> poor old, poor bloke. That'll be fine. Hmm. Go back around that and put some beading, uh, some weld beads in it. One more on it. Uh, Lewis says, Can't you just do the same as Corporal Jones and tuck the tablecloth into your trousers? <laughs> well, I could, but if I walk away, it's just going to pull everything with it. The first year I went to Telford, some bloke had a had a full size remote control R two D two. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if it's something to do with the hall, but it meant that the the remote control would cut out intermittently, so this thing would just go careering off. <laughs> so, uh, so he managed to. He, he made a friend of mine was bending over one of the tables, just looking at something. He got goosed by R two D two, and. Uh, and then the next day, it collided with what the, the corner of one of the tables and knocked a load of the models off. Uh, yeah, so it was banned from the hall after that. So it should be. Yeah. Even though it is R2-D2. 
That's some fun. They do some. Have you been to Telford, Steph? No, I've never had. Oh, oh they've had some. Well, that they, they, they one year they had. Um, uh, I, I can't remember what it was. Some a four three two. You may have even been a Spartan. Oh, yeah. And uh, and something else in the main hall, but apparently the maneuvering it, the move where they were maneuvering them into place, it just tore the tore the floor up, so they're not allowed to do that anymore. Oh, but it's, uh, another year they had a full size Huey with a uh, with a uh, with uh, all the crew, and uh, it was one of these one of the one of the crew's birthday, and there, there was there was a couple of Daleks patrolling the hall, so. All the crew and two Daleks were singing "Happy Birthday" to the, well, the door gunner on his Huey, so, <laughs> <laughs> with the voice modulator and everything. I was. <laughs> oh dear lord! Oh, that that was class to see. Oh, it was funny. It was funny. Oh, that's all the parts of the tank ready to be sprayed. May as well make the gentleman. No, I'm poor the Russian students. Right, all oh, past seven, Dave, and I'm getting a bit chilly out here. Oh, okay, mate. I'm going to call it a day. Yeah, the temperature's dropped quite severely yeah. out here. Oh, it's actually getting cold here as well. Yeah. Okay, mate. Yeah, no problem. So, I'm going to knock on the head there, guys. Uh, sorry it's such a short one, but there's just the two of us. So, do you want to say goodbye, Dave? See you later. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, guys. Remember, stay safe. Keep modelling. <laughs>